Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear, and I'm here in our store in Smyrna, Georgia. This is the extended review of the Olight S1R and S2R baton lights. All right, here we are with the Olight S1R and S2R still in the packaging. These lights have become the new standard in EDC flashlights. 900 lumens on the S1R, 1,020 lumens on the S2R. Pretty serious output, especially on the S1R, thanks to the IMR battery that they have included with the light. Previously, they had the S1, which was definitely a favorite. I carried one myself for a long time. They had the S10R2, another favorite. They had the S10. Bunch of different models. They do a really great job on EDC lights, and these are the best ones yet for sure. Built-in charging. They come with the battery. Got serious output. Got a great interface. Magnetic tail cap, a lot of cool things going for them. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the packaging. We'll look at the S1R first. So you got some details here on the back. So it says 900 plus 300 lumens. And what that means is that it's going to run at 900 lumens for 1.5 minutes. And then just because of heat, it's going to drop down to 300 lumens. And it's going to run at that for 50 minutes. So you can get a nice burst of that high output for a minute and a half. And then it's going to drop down just because of heat. And then you also have a second turbo mode, the turbo, and then the first one was turbo S. So you've got 600 lumens that's going to drop down to 300 and you get it 1.5 minutes and the 55 minutes on that. And then the high is 300 lumens for 60 minutes. Medium, you got 60 lumens for 4.5 hours. Then you've got low 12 lumens for 33 hours and moonlight 0.5 lumens for 15 days. 145 meters of beam distance IPX rating on the waterproof rating, and then you have a 1.5 meter impact rating. You're going to notice really similar specs on the S2R. The big difference is going to be in your runtime. So really similar output. You're looking at 900 versus 1,020 lumens, and you're going to see when you go outside, it's honestly pretty hard for your eyes to tell the difference between those two numbers. But you've got 153 meters of beam distance, so slightly longer on that. 60 days of total runtime versus the 15 that you got on the uh, on the S1R, so you've got the 1,020 lumens plus 500, and that's going to go for two minutes and 190 minutes, so significantly longer on that, and you've got a higher output, so the 300 versus the 500, and then on high, you've got 500 lumens for 200 minutes, and you'll notice that that does not drop. It's not going to drop from the 500 lumens, and then the medium, you've got 120 lumens for 13 hours, 12 lumens for 120 hours, and the moonlight is 0.5 lumens for 60 days. So 60 days versus 15, pretty dramatically uh, large increases in the run times across the board on this. And then most of the ratings are going to be the same other than those, especially in terms of the, uh, the impact rating, the waterproofing, and then the beam distance is really, really close. All right, let's move on. Let's go ahead and open these up. And show you what you get on the inside. So you got this pull tab sticker thing. Let's go ahead and open this up. This is the S1R, obviously. And they've done something interesting with the new packaging, which is kind of nice. It looks like it's floating there. But what it is, it's uh, held in by the clip in the back. So you've got to slide it down. And then when the clip comes out, then you pull it back out. Just a note so you don't destroy the packaging if you want to keep it in nice condition for any reason. And you've got some other stuff in here. They uh, started including... A soft felt bag. <laughs> I'm not really sure what this is for, but uh, you can put change in it or whatever. I don't know. You got a soft felt felt bag that comes with both of them. And then you have the user manual in a whole bunch of different languages. So the information that's in English is pretty short, but you've got all these different languages. So if you are international and English isn't your first language, language, you are all set because you got a ton of different ones. Actually, here's your list of all the languages that they have covered in there. And then the other accessories that you have, this is a rechargeable light. So uh, you have the charging piece. I'm gonna, I'm gonna demolish this box real quick. So you have the charging cable and then you have a lanyard. So the lanyards are really nice. I like their lanyards, especially because they include this piece of wire. So they've got that wire there on the end. And uh, what that is for is for easy application. So you can just slide that through and then you pull the lanyard through, tie it off. And uh, it's a really nice way to get the lanyard in there. The Olight is the only manufacturer I've ever seen do anything like this. And it really makes adding the lanyard a lot easier. So it's nice that they include that little piece of wire on the lanyard itself. And then you have the charging cable. So this is their new charging system. They used to have that micro dock that you just set down in there. And they still actually do have that. That is an optional accessory that works with these. But 
I really like their new cable. Their new cable is super cool. So some other manufacturers have done similar things in the past, but this is Olight's version of it. And what it is, is you just got this magnetic piece and the light sets on it. You can have it any orientation you want. You can see it holds on there really, really well. And that will charge the light. And on the other end, you've just got USB. So we'll show you the charging a little bit later, but the way it attaches on there, I mean, you just get it in the general vicinity of it. You can see I'm not even trying to really line it up or anything. Even coming in from the side, it goes on there correctly. So it auto orients itself. Just get in the general vicinity of the charger and well, don't just throw it at it. That doesn't work so well, but pretty much anything else and you're good to go. And so on the S2R, you're going to have all the same stuff. You're just going to have the versions for the S2R. So different user manual. It's going to be slightly different. And then obviously a different battery. You've got the 18650 battery versus the 16340 IMR that you have in the S1R. So we're going to slide it down and then pull it out. And you've got another bag. So you can store your light in there or something. I don't know. <laughs> I probably should ask why they include those. But it's nice. You know, it's a nice little optional thing or a nice little accessory that they put in there that you can optionally use if you want to. So they have the same cable in there. You've got the lanyard as well. Same accessories, just the ones that are appropriate for the S2R. So let's clean up this mess and uh, we'll take a closer look at the lights. All right, here we have a closer look at the S1R and S2R. Obviously a pretty big size difference and uh, it's all due to that battery. So you've got a 3200 milliamp hour 18650 in the S2R versus a 550 milliamp hour uh, 16340 that can do the, the high discharge. So you get the 900 lumens in a really compact size. You know, a lot of people have already said, and we get this on pretty much every light, they're like, oh, it only does it for a minute and a half. You got to understand, in a light this small, 900 lumens is nuts. That's a crazy amount of light coming out of such a compact, uh, compact size. It's a serious amount of lumens. And if it ran any longer than that, it's going to get so hot that you're going to destroy the internals of the light. You're going to burn your hand. You don't want it running longer than that. So you've got that burst for when you need it, and a minute and a half is a really usable amount of light, and you got the great run times, the still very usable amount of light on the lower outputs. Myself, I use the highest output. I'm going to use that 900 lumens. I've actually been EDCing one of these since they came out. I'm going to use that 900 lumens in short bursts. And then most of the time, I personally use the much lower outputs. I actually use moonlight the most just for looking around the house, or especially at night so I don't disturb my kids. Uh, when they're in their rooms or anything like that. And it works really well for that. So you've got the burst when you need it. you got the lower outputs for the majority of the use. If you need sustained output for longer periods, you need a much larger light, something with much more surface area to dissipate the heat, more battery capacity and all that. So there definitely is a compromise, but you get a really good form factor and you get the burst of the high output in these two lights, which I think is the ideal situation, especially for an EDC light. I mean, they've got the X7, which can do 9,000 lumens. Do you want to carry that around in your pocket? First off, you probably can't fit it in your pocket. And uh, second off, it's not really reasonable for EDC. So these are a very good compromise. They get you kind of the best of both worlds in a compact size. So let's put them side by side. You'll notice a slightly larger head on the uh, on the S2R and if you look at the bezels, the bezels are actually the same size. If you line them up, the bezels are the same size. So they have the same LED, they have the same optic and all that the same in there. It does look larger on the S2R, the head, because they have the aluminum material there on the top going around the, uh, the bezel instead of underneath it like they do on the S1R. So you do have a slightly larger head on the uh, on the S2R, but you're going to have the same beam pattern as you'll see when we go outside. You still have the magnet on the tail cap. Let's see if I got something. There we go. I got a Sanyo on a loop over here. You got the magnet on the tail cap, which I find super useful. You can attach this to actually have a lamp over there that has about 40 uh, Olight batons <laughs> stuck to it. I have these on lamps around the house. It's very useful around the shop. We have metal shelving. Stick it to the metal shelving, and you can see stuff. Uh, easily without having to hold it in your hand. You can use it on the underside of your car. I find the magnet very, very useful, and they both have that in the tail cap. And it is actually strong enough on the uh, S2R to hold the light up, as you can see. Here's a real close look at the optic of the S2R. So you've got the XML2 LED down in there, and you've got the optic on there. Same thing on the S1R. 
What that does is it gives you a really smooth, clean, uniform beam versus a reflector light where you've got that hot spot in the center and then you've got the brighter part on the outside or the spill. Uh, what that does is it helps eliminate tunnel vision for up close to medium range kind of stuff. So if you imagine the beam of a flashlight, you know, you got the beam of the flashlight, you got that bright part in the center. Imagine if you're lighting up this packaging right here and you've got that, well, we'll use the lamp that's reflecting. That's a pretty good uh, illustration. So you've got the bright part in the center that's the hot spot. You get really tunnel vision effect. So you're just lighting up this little part right here. It's kind of hard to see everything that you're looking at for up close kind of things when you have a reflector light. So for EDC lights, I really like optics because they give you just that smooth, clean, uniform beam that works really well for up close, medium range kind of stuff. And again, you have the same thing on both. Really nice pocket clips on both. So you got the deep carry pocket clip. They sit nice and deep in your pocket. They are technically reversible. They don't work so well when they are reversed. You can see you've only got the slot up here for the S2R and the clip part is gonna be above the head uh, if you flip it around, we'll do it real quick since I know everybody's going to ask. Um, you can see it barely touches the top of the bezel. Not really optimal. So these are meant for uh, reflector or optic up carry for sure. And then on the S1R, you can take it off and you can flip it around. And that one works a little bit better. You can do that, but you can see it's still not optimal. Um, they're definitely made for them to be carried like that. But it's up to you if you want to flip it around. It totally works. The nice thing about the way these are oriented is they are perfectly oriented to fit on the bill of a ball cap. So you can slide it onto the bill of a ball cap. And then you have a light that can be used like a headlamp. So that's super useful. Hands-free kind of lighting. So you got the magnet. You got the clip that you can attach to things. You got a bunch of different options in the way you can carry these lights and of course you can just remove the clip if you don't want the clip if you want to use it on a keychain you want to use it on the lanyard whatever you can just slide it right off as I did pretty nice accents on here so you've got the blue PVD coating uh, around the switch and then you have it on the bezel as well they don't have to do that kind of stuff and I'm sure it costs more because PVD coatings you know it's more time and effort that they have to do versus just straight stainless steel or nothing just having you know, the black aluminum throughout. So it's nice that they do that. Why not make the light look a little bit cooler and uh, give it nice touches like that? So it's nice that they do that. Here's the charging end of it. You can see you got those contact points where the magnetic just sticks right on there. Let's open up the S1R and show you the battery on the inside. So here's the battery. You'll notice that you have positive and negative contacts on the end. Uh, normally, the traditionally positive end has positive and negative contacts on there. And they did that so they could have the charging in the tail cap. And this is an IMR. So you're not going to be, be able to use a standard lithium ion battery in these and have them be able to charge. They will work just fine in the lights. You will not get the full 900 lumens on the S1R. It's probably going to be around four or 500 lumens on the S1R. Uh, on the S2R, you could put a standard lithium ion battery in here. But again, you will not be able to charge it inside the light because they have the same thing. They got the positive and negative contacts on the end. And again, they do that so they can have the uh, the charging in the tail cap. And we do have spares of both of those. So if you want to get spare batteries, we have them. You can absolutely get spares. Honestly, I just never take the batteries out. When it starts getting low, slap it on the charger and you're good to go. Just keep it charged up and you'll be fine. But you can get spare batteries if you want to. They're not too expensive. They're actually pretty reasonably priced. Okay, let's talk about the interface on these. They have slightly different interfaces. This is actually the revised version of the S1R. The original S1R just had the one single turbo output mode and uh, it didn't run for very long. And uh, you know the, the drop off below that was pretty dramatic. So you went from 900 to 300 lumens. So they added in a second turbo mode. So that's cool. So you have the 600 turbo, you have the 900 turbo S. And uh, so you get some more variability, you get some more options in the S1R with the version 2. And as of the time of the video, that's all we have in stock. So you don't have to worry about getting the original version from us. All we have is the version 2. So the interface on it is just tap the switch to turn it on, press and hold that switch, and it'll cycle through your main outputs. And then press and hold from off, and it'll go straight into a moonlight mode. Great for up close kind of stuff. Like I said, I use this a lot. I use this more than any other output. Crazy battery life and it's plenty of light. Actually, even when you're outside to light up the path right in front of you, to light up what's in your hands, to light up the inside of a pack, anything like that. 
It's perfect for that. And then double click and it will go into turbo from off. Double click again and it will go into the turbo S. And you can also do that from on. So if you have it turned on, do the double click, it'll go into the turbo. One more time, it'll go into the turbo S. You also have strobe in there. So the way to get into that is to triple click and it'll go into strobe. Just tap the light to turn it back off. You also have a timer function. So if you need the light to turn off automatically for any reason, maybe using it like a night light or anything like that, click and then click and hold. And two flashes means that it's nine minutes. You can do it again and it will switch over to the short timer, which will be three minutes. Uh, so if you want it to automatically turn off, you've got that feature in there. There's also a lockout. So if you have the light turned off, press and hold for a couple seconds and uh, you'll see a flash and then it will be turned off or the switch will not operate. And you can see there's an indicator there underneath the switch just to let you know that it is locked out. And the way to get out of that is just to press and hold and it'll go out of that and actually go straight into moonlight. Pretty much the same exact, exact operation on the S2R. The only difference is you only have the one turbo output. So you have the high of the 500 lumens, and then the turbo is going to be the 1,020 lumens. Because when this drops down, it's going to drop down to the 500 lumens, and it's able to stay there. Uh, so they didn't have to, have to add in the second uh, turbo mode like they did in the S1R. So you've got the same interface. Just when you double click, it's just going to go into turbo, and you can see double clicking doesn't put it into any higher outputs. Same interface other than that. You turn it on, press and hold, and it'll cycle through your different outputs. So again, real quick on the interface, we're gonna use the S2R. Just tap the light to turn it on, and press and hold, it'll cycle through your different outputs. Double click from off to go straight into the turbo. Do the second double click on the S1R to go into the turbo S. Three clicks will get into your strobe. And then you've got the lockout to do the press and hold for a couple seconds. It'll go into, didn't do it for long enough. <laughs> It'll turn back off. Then you got the lockout and then do the press and hold and it'll come back out of that. And then you have the timer function as well, where you do the click and then click and hold. You've got the timer where it'll stay on for three minutes or nine minutes, depending on which one you're in. It's a great interface on these. I've been carrying one of the batons basically since they came out. They've gone through a bunch of different versions that I've carried several of the different versions. And the interface works really well. So you've got the instant access to the lowest output. You've got the instant access to the highest output. You know, another double click will get you into the instant access to the highest output on the S1R. Instant access to strobe. Quick access to the other outputs. It's a great interface. And in actual use, it works really well. Uh, so let me show you the charging feature on this real quick, just so you can see what it looks like when these are charging. All right, I got the charging cable plugged in. You can see you've got a green indicator LED down on there, and then we're just going to stick the S1R on there. And you can see that turns red, and then when it's done, it will turn green again. And it's as simple as that. It's a pretty actually fast charging, so they've got a pretty high current running through these, so they'll charge the lights. Uh, relatively fast, especially considering how compact these lights are and how compact the chargers are. So the charger system works very well. And you can mount it to a table, mount it to your dash, get the optional OmniDock. You've got a bunch of different charging options, and they all work well. One thing to note on the lockout that I didn't really mention before, I actually personally prefer a mechanical lockout. And you can also mechanically lock these out by just loosening the tail cap just a little bit and that will lock the light out. I like to do that because it's a lot harder for a light to accidentally have the tail cap tightened. I've never had that happen uh, where I've actually had the switch accidentally be pressed and taken out a lockout. So I like to just be able to loosen the tail cap if you want a true lockout. And of course, you can always just remove the battery as well for complete sense of peace, peace of mind. <laughs> That's the saying. So some stuff I've been trying to touch on in recent videos that I neglected for a long time is just the stuff that you get when you buy a high-end light. Uh, I talked about the impact rating and I talked about the waterproofing. So the IPX8 means that you can submerge it up to two meters uh, for 30 minutes, I think is what the actual rating is. Maybe somebody will correct me in the comments, but it's, it's around there. Basically, that means don't go diving with it. Anything short of that and you're good to go. You drop it in a puddle, you drop it in a creek, you use it in the rain, and you'll be fine. Obviously, don't try to open it up while you're doing any of those things. Other than that, you're good to go. They also handle drops pretty well. My kids take these on walks all the time. If you've watched any of my other videos, I've had them in a few of my, few of my videos, and they are constantly dropping them on concrete. 
and they still work just fine. Basically, the 1.5 meter impact rating means if you're holding it up in your hands, you're out there using it, and you drop it, it'll be okay. If you throw it at the concrete, if you throw it at the wall, if you drop it from higher than that, yeah, some of the internals might get messed up. Just uh, in regular everyday use, they're gonna be good to go. They also both have type three hard anodizing. And what that means is that if they get scratched, or something tries to scratch them anyway, it's not gonna affect the finish. If you really gouge down, especially with a hardened steel blade, you're gonna be able to damage them. And over time, you may see some wear on the knurling if they're just constantly being abraded by metal. But other than that, I've had ones that I've carried for a year that still look basically brand new. The Type 3 hard anodizing holds up really, really well. It's very scratch resistant, especially compared to the lower forms of, uh, of anodizing. I mentioned before, you've got the nice touches like the PVD coating, that nice blue coating around the bezel and then around the, uh, the switch. And other nice things that you have are the internals. So a lot of the lower quality lights that you see, you open them up and you see solder blobs on the inside. You see loose wiring that's just not very well put together. Really low quality, thin wiring that doesn't hold up to the kind of current that's running through these lights. And you don't see that on any of these lights, on any of the O lights. You open them up, high quality internals, everything is very well put together. I mean, even the charging cable, the charging cable is, they're using flat cable. <laughs> like just touches like that are really, really nice. You know that if they are gonna do things like that, then they're gonna put care into everything else as well. So if the internals, you look inside there and you see nice high quality, everything is put together really well, you know the chances are that they're gonna put a lot of effort into everything else also. Before we go outside, let's see how these compare to some of the previous versions. So here is the S1. You can see even with the built-in charging, the S1R is only a tiny bit longer than the S1. So you add a few millimeters on there just to add in that charging system, but not too much. It's still really, really compact, especially considering the size of the original S10R, which was the same size as the S10R2. You can see how much longer it is compared to the S1R and the S1. So we've also got an S30R over here. So here's the S30R compared to the S2R, significantly smaller on the S2R. You've got a lot of the same features. You've got an optic versus a reflector in there, but you got the built-in built charging, pretty much the same output, and uh, a much smaller size. Here's the S20R, just so you can see what size that was. The S2R is actually even shorter than the S20R as well. So you've got these nice, really compact lights with a lot of features built into them. Great output, built-in charging. Uh, and man, all the magnets are sticking to each other. Why don't we just, why don't we just make a big old mess and just, there we go. <laughs> so we'll just let them all stick to each other. So the original S1 is one of the best selling lights that we've ever had. It might actually be the best selling and I have to look at the numbers. But we've sold a ton of these little lights. It was an awesome size, great interface, impressive output. And they just made the S1R improve on almost all of that. So it is slightly longer, but you've got a higher output. You've still got a really compact size. You've got the built-in charging. You've got the included battery. So we've had a lot of people ask about the S1R versus the S1. And I think it absolutely is worth the upgrade. I've actually been carrying the S1R since it came out, like I said, and it replaced my S1 Titanium. I think the S1R is definitely a worthy upgrade. You've got a lot of nice features in there. And if you don't want the built-in charging, the S1 is still being made. It is still a great light, but the S1R, a very, very good choice. So we're gonna go ahead and take these lights outside and we'll show you how they do outside just so you can see how they work in real world use. All right, we're outside with the two new O lights. I also brought the S1 since so many of you own those. I also got the 40 mag light that I use as a control. Let's go ahead and try out the mag light first. So the tree right there is about 30 feet away. Dock house down there on the lake is about 100 feet away. There's your mag light. Let's go and try out the S1 first. This is one of the most popular lights we've ever sold. So many of you know what it can do. There is your max output of 500 lumens. Really, really impressive light. Until the S1R came out and added on those new features, the S1 was honestly, I think, the best thing going for an EDC light. Great size, great output. Got the magnetic tail cap. Just had a lot of nice things going for it. Really nice beam on there. But then they came out with the S1R and uh, you got the built-in charging, you got the included battery, and the 900 lumens. And you got that cool kind of slow ramping that it does when it turns on. I really like that. So there's your turbo. 
There's your Turbo S. So there's your max output of the 900 lumens. Let's zoom in down there just so you can see how extremely well everything is lit up down there. Really impressive for such a compact light. I mean, this thing you can easily fit in your pocket and not notice it. Have it by your bed stand. I have these lights on lamps all around the house or the uh, Baton series from Olight anyway. Let me show you the other outputs. The low, good for up close kind of stuff. Great battery life on it. There's your medium. There's your high. And then here's your moonlight. So a lot of modes you can choose from. A lot of different situations. And they're all really easy to get to. So you got the shortcuts from off to get to your different outputs. Great, great interface that they have on the Baton series. So there's your S1R. Let's go ahead and try out the S2R. And it's going to look like I'm pretty much turning on the same light. Because <laughs> the beams are going to be the same. Output is really close. 900 versus 1,020 lumens. Your eyes are going to have a lot of trouble telling the difference. Let's zoom in down there just so you can see. Pretty much the same output level. Shining around a little bit. You got the same size head, so you got the same optics, same LED. You just have the much longer battery life on the S2R. It's still compact, it's still easy to carry in your pocket. I really like the S2R. It's kind of hard to choose between the S1R and the S2R. They both definitely have their advantages. The S2R is really not that big and you do get that much better battery life. So the S2R I think is still a great choice. And uh, let me show you those other output levels. There's your low, there's your medium, there's your high, and here's your moonlight. Again, when you want that up close, great battery life, kind of light. And then when you need it, you got that turbo. Let's do them side by side just so you can see. We'll get it in the Turbo S. So there's the S1R. There's the S2R. Pretty much the same beam and output and everything on them. Okay, let's go and take these out to a longer distance and see how they do. All right, got some more space to try out those O-lights. We're gonna go ahead and do the S1 first again. So there it is on the max output of 500 lumens. Boat right there is about 20 feet away. Got a couple targets set up out there. First one is 50 yards, second one is 100 yards. Tree line out there is 130 yards. And those two white signs are at about 60 yards. Okay, let's go ahead and try out the S1R. There's your turbo. There's your Turbo S. So there's the max output of the 900 lumens. Let's zoom in on there just so you can see how things are lit up out there. So there is your 50 yards. If I can get my finger in the right place, there's your 50 yards, there's your 100 yards, and the tree line out there is 130 yards. Shine that around a little bit. Again, really impressive the amount of light that's coming out of this thing. There's the lower output just so you can see what that looks like. Go and cycle through them. See what those look like, and then here is your moonlight, just so you can see what that looks like. Okay, let's go ahead and try out the S2R, and we'll zoom in just so you can see how well that's lit up out there. Again, pretty much the same beam and output on these, you're just going to get the larger size, obviously, and then the better runtime. And there's your targets out there, you can see the lighter parts of the tree out at the 130 yards. Let me go ahead and cycle through the different outputs on this one. There's your low, there's your medium, there's your high. So in a couple of the recent big and bright light videos, I walked around a little bit and talked about why I like big and bright lights, why I think they're so useful for everybody. So in this video, I'm gonna walk around a little bit and talk about why I carry a flashlight on a daily basis and why I think it's a good idea for other people to do it. And the biggest and best reason is it gets dark. I mean, I'm outside. It's probably three or four o'clock in the morning. You got some nice light pollution from Atlanta over there, but uh, I can't see very well out here. You know, down there in the woods, I'm shining it down in the woods just so you can see what it looks like with actual, some actual light. You know, stumbling around in, in that kind of situation, even in an urban environment, in an unlit building, it gets dark. It gets dark all the time. It gets dark eventually everywhere. I've been in a lot of situations over the years where I've been very thankful to have a nice high quality light. You know, you're in a movie theater and the power goes out, or you're in a restaurant, you can't see around. Even looking at a menu in the dark, having a nice high quality illumination tool is very, very useful. And yeah, you've got keychain lights, and yeah, you got your cell phones and things like that, and you can rely on places to have lighting for you, but why do that? Why not have a nice high quality illumination tool, something that lights things up 
and does it well. The best thing I can recommend is try it out. If all you have is a keychain light, all you have is a cheap AAA light, or something that you've had for years, just carry it around for a little while. See how often you use it, see if it's useful. If it's not useful, then don't take my advice. But if you do find it useful, you know, go for an upgrade. And I know I'm probably preaching to the choir for sure if you're watching this video, definitely if you're a subscriber. But if you're not, on the off chance that you're not, give it a try and see how useful it is. It's one of those things like carrying a pocket knife. You don't really realize how often you use it until you start doing it. So if you EDC or everyday carry a light, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you've been in any situations where you're like, man, I'm really glad I had that light on me. I love hearing comments like that. And uh, once I've accumulated a bunch of them, I'm gonna make a video and just kind of talk about situations that people have been in where they've been very thankful to have a light on them. So again, if you EDC a light, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you've used it for. If you don't, give it a try. Let me know what you think. All right, so that is the Olight S1R and S2R. Impressive little lights. I like them a lot and I highly recommend them. I think these are the best of the Baton series, which is a great series already. You have the S1, the S2, the S10R, the S30R, and a bunch of other lights in that series as well. And uh, the S1R and the S2R, I think are the best ones yet. So you've got the built-in charging, they come with batteries, you've got all the different outputs, you got the impressive output, compact size, really nice beam. I don't know if I touched on this earlier, I'm gonna say it again, just in case. I really like the beam on these. You get that smooth, clean, even beam that just lights up all oh, big wide area. So you don't really have the hot spot thanks to the optic. It's just an even beam throughout. Same thing on the S1R and S2R and most of the Baton series these days. But it's really great for medium and up close kind of distances. You can see what it does. You don't really get that tunnel vision effect you get with that really tight concentrated beam. So great beam for that kind of stuff, especially EDC. All right, anyway, if you like them, you can buy them from me at goinggear.com. As always, get going and start something. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Marshall. You wanna see some flashlights?